Understanding the physics of ultrasound is vital when performing ultrasound scans. Artifacts are extremely common in musculoskeletal ultrasound and potentially can cause errors of diagnosis and interpretation of what we're seeing. Artifacts can also be really helpful. The limitation of ultrasound as a modality, in particular the operator dependency, can be dictated largely by the principles of physics along with the current technological capabilities of the machines. In this webinar, we're going to be taking a look at the artifact of anisotropy. Remember that when we're thinking about an ultrasound image, we must consider that the machine, the ultrasound system, is making a number of assumptions in order to be able to produce the image in a timely fashion. So what we're seeing on the screen is not a direct picture or image of what's going on inside the body, but rather we need to think of it as an image that is being created from a set of data. And that data be can become skewed because of some of the assumptions that is being make made by the ultrasound machine, but also by way of the way in which the ultrasound image is actually being created. And this is really important when we think about an isotropy. When a sound wave or a light wave, when a wave hits the surface, it bounces off that surface um, at the same angle with which it hits. So you may remember from GCSE and O-level physics, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And what this means is, is when a wave hits a reflective surface, it bounces away at the same angle that it hits it. OK, so if it if it hits the reflective surface perfectly perpendicular, then the wave bounces back directly along the line of which it hits. But if it hits at an angle, then it reflects away at the same angle. And this is really important for ultrasound, because if we consider the way in which an ultrasound wave uh, image is being created, so the crystals in the probe create a sound wave. They hit a reflective surface and a bounce back towards the probe. The probe detects that incoming information and takes it back to the ultrasound system to create into an image. So if the sound wave is bouncing back from a reflective surface and comes back to the probe, that's fine. But if it hits a reflective surface and bounces away from the probe, then unfortunately we get an isotropy. And an isotropy means that the um, image will appear significantly hypoechoic or a, a complete loss of sound wave image being reflected back from the to the probe from that particular um, structure. So in order to make sense of an isotropy, we also need to consider how reflective the different structures within the musculoskeletal system are. So the tendons, for example, are very reflective and therefore they are very sensitive to the angle of the probe relative to the target structure. When we think about muscle, for example, that is much less reflective and therefore the angle is much less, is much less sensitive to small deviations in the angle of the probe to the target structure. So if we look at this image in relation to an isotropy, we see that the angle that the sound beam hits will dictate whether or not the sound beam comes back to the probe or not. We can liken this to when we look in a mirror. So if we look directly into a mirror, we will see our face. If we look at the, uh, into a mirror at an angle, then our face disappears. We will see something you know, several feet to the side of us, depending on the angle that we look into the mirror at. And you can see this nicely um, shown in the image above. So on the left hand side, the probe is perpendicular to the tendon structures towards the top of the image. In the um, image on the right hand side, the probe has been tilted slightly and then the tendons become hypoechoic. Note that the connective tissue around and even the bone, the colouring has changed far less. So we're talking about relative sensitivity to angulation. That's really important to consider. So the bright reflective structures in the image on the left hand side are the ones that change greatly on the right hand side. But when you look at some of the other structures, for example, the vascular structures towards the 
um, left hand edge of the image, they've hardly changed at all. The bone hasn't changed much either, and the connective tissue and the uh, surrounding connective tissue and fat has hardly changed at all in terms of its grayscale appearance. And that's really significant when we're thinking about an isotropy in musculoskeletal imaging. Here's a nice uh, depiction of this when we're scanning a patella tendon. So in the image at the top, the ultrasound probe is perfectly perpendicular to the tendon and we get a really nice bright hyperechoic appearance of the tendon there between the two yellow parallel lines. On the image below, the ultrasound probe has been angulated around 10-15 degrees and we can see that then the tendon looks hypoechoic. This could easily be misinterpreted as pathology or even a tendon rupture. So other top tips, things of importance. When we're scanning, it's really important that we don't scan just relative to the surface of the skin or the soft tissue, that we consider the target structure that we're actually trying to scan. So on the image here, the probe is just balanced on the top of the skin, but it's not perpendicular to the target structure. However, if we tow in and we and we when we manipulate the probe and we put pressure on so that it's perpendicular to the structure that we're trying to scan then we'll get a really nice image so it's a really important thing to remember and consider when you first start scanning that you need to think about your target structure under the skin and the probe's relative angle and relationship to this structure not how it sits on the skin a, a really good practice for this is scanning the long head of biceps so if you take the long head of biceps from the rotator interval and you track it down to the bottom of the anterior recess of the shoulder to where the pec tendon comes in, then you need to constantly be changing your angle to maintain the bright appearance of the long head of biceps tendon. That's a really nice way of practicing changing the angle of your probe to maintain the appearance of the structure. So here we start showing uh, uh, an illustration of the need to rock and change and move the probe through an arc, through an angle. You're always looking to make the target structure, the tendon in this case, as bright as possible. And a really good practice skill is to actually move the probe through an arc so it gets brighter, brighter, brighter until it starts to get darker again. And then you bring it back and you, and you focus on it at the most bright point. And that's giving you the uh, the point where the uh, probe is most perpendicular and therefore getting the most reflection from the target structure. So these are some really good technical skills that you can practice and probe skills that you can practice for your scanning. Anisotropy is a really, really important artifact to be aware of.